Hey, good morning, everybody. Look at her. Look at her. I got to get a haircut, y'all. I am, it is so weird. Charlie, you got yes. gray. What year? What year did you get gray? Um, I'd say along about uh, 1975. Were you young when you got gray? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. But the problem I had was I got gone before I got completely oh, gray. Funny. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, sometimes men, their beard grays first and then their head yeah. grays first. Well, I seem to be just the opposite. I got more black in the beard black than I got up. Yeah. Well, I have black in the back of my head, so I've decided one day if we did the show backwards, then you could see that I still have some <laughs> black hair, but it is so funny. I absolutely went silver so fast. Mm -hmm. and. Stress could be part of it. I don't know. Do you think stress might have anything to do with why you went silver I so think soon? stress has a lot to do yes, with it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and we're going to talk a little bit about so. stress because there's a lot of stress going on in yeah. the world. As I came up here this morning, seriously, yeah. if it weren't against the law to video, I would have had my camera out videoing the traffic northbound. And I said next week is spring break. And these mm -hmm. mountains will be completely full of stranger, danger, stranger, yeah. stranger, danger. There are going to be so many people coming to the mountains. They come here because they absolutely love our lifestyle. Right. And we love our lifestyle. And I was talking to some people yesterday, and we were talking about improvement and growth in ball ground. And I don't know if you've been to ball ground lately. Yeah. Ball ground is growing, but the really cool thing about us is we are growing with improvements and we have so many great businesses downtown. Mm -hmm. And these businesses are doing well, but it concerns me that the businesses are doing well from tourism, not from localism. Right. And I've always been, from the day I started hanging out in McKaysville, if the locals don't support the businesses, we cannot live just on tourism. Yeah. We cannot live on tourism. The locals have to shop locally. They have to open their own small businesses. If you're mm -hmm. a local sitting at home and you have a dream, yeah. open your own small business. Absolutely. And take a risk. And we've seen a lot of small business in LJ, a lot of small business in Gilmer County. We've seen a lot of that in Ball Ground. And people are kind of walking the tightrope and saying, okay, I'm going to do it. And if I fall in the river, I fall in the river. But I think it's a great time and a great time of opportunity to follow your dream and do something that you've always wanted to do. Absolutely, it is. Now, are any of the businesses in Ella J and in Gilmer County, are they newbies that you've met? Are they people who just came to this town, loved it, and wanted to open a business here? Or are they locals? Um, I think uh, a good part of them are people who have, have come here and loved it. Mm -hmm. um, who doesn't love it? Oh. Who What's doesn't love? love it? That's you know, right. Yeah. That's right. But uh, there are uh, there's there's more locals than I thought there'd be. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, I thought almost everybody there would be. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'll say transplants. That mm -hmm. seems to be the word people use, right. and I'm right. one, so I yep. can say it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, we've we've got a, a good number of locals, but I think the majority of them are people who have moved in. Mm -hmm. And moved in and fell in love. Absolutely. And you know what's really cool? They move in, they join your churches, they yep. support your other local businesses, and then they say there is an opportunity to follow my dream. Mm -hmm. And whether it be you've always had a little talent, you wanted to open an art studio, or you're a great photographer, this is a wonderful place. It is. Yeah. It's a wonderful place to do a drone business, to do a video business, to do, you know, and, and mm -hmm. there's just so much to capture. I went on a road this week in Ball Ground that I'd never been on, and the, the girl who was with me said, you've never been on this road? There's a road you haven't been on? You've <laughs> never been on this road? I said, no, I've never been on this yeah. road. It was absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, it's only six miles from where I live, and I'd never been on that road. Yeah. So if everybody today who lives in Gilmer County got out and said, I'm going to do even a six-mile radius, and check out some new roads, I think you'd be surprised. I guarantee you would because that happened to me. Uh, when I first came here, you know, I, uh, I got How on the How long have you been roads. here? I've been here for 17 years mm -hmm. now. And uh, I get on the roads and just kind of ride around, but I stay fairly close to into where I live. Right. And, uh, but when I was elected uh, chairman and took office, 
Now I've got to go out all yes. over. Yeah. Um, I'll say this, when we <coughs> first came up here, we looked around a little and, and found a place we really loved and thought it was such a beautiful place. We're never gonna find anything more beautiful than this. And we bought it. Mm -hmm. Don't regret it, still love it there. Right. But since I have had this job and I'm going out and having to get on other You're roads, finding really beautiful. Oh, there's some of these places. <laughs> yeah. It's like, where, where did this come from? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Now, do you love Boardtown Road? I do, yes. I love, I love it. I tell yes. everybody, if you're going to Blue Ridge, do not go 515. Mm -hmm. Get off in LJ, get to know a little bit about the LJ businesses, and then jump yourself on board yeah. town and just take that drive. It, it is, is so beautiful. It is one of the most scenic <clears throat> Absolutely. That you can take anywhere. Yeah. And you know what I've learned? Can't believe I did this. I took somebody and we went and we made a turn and we made another turn and we made another turn and we ended up in Copper Hill. And I yeah. was so excited at myself. <laughs> yeah. I did that without getting on 515. And I yeah. thought, Lord have mercy, you have arrived. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, you know what people forget is you used to have to go to these places when there was no 550. Absolutely. Well, yeah. those routes are still there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Had you ever visited LJ before 515 was built? Before, oh, yeah. Um, in fact, when I got my very first, what I refer to as my real job mm -hmm. with Southern Bell uh, back in 1967, I was maintaining uh, long distance circuits. And at that time, Southern Bell. Uh, provided the long distance service for uh, ETC mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and uh, all the way up to Blue Ridge, through mm -hmm, Canton and Blue mm -hmm, Ridge. Mm -hmm. uh, so I Let was me tell you my first Atlanta that. Southern yeah. Bell phone number. And this was 404-523-6269. I can't believe I can remember that. Now I can't tell you if I've had lunch today or not, but I can remember that. 404-523-6269. I had an Atlanta phone number because we had a business in Forest Park. We had a. We also had a branch office in, over in Alabama. My husband decided he wanted to have a little uh, uh, body shop over there, and so I had an Atlanta phone number. And people would call me and say, "This is an Atlanta number." Do you know the one thing I found? I got more. What do you call those calls? People used to make these bad phone Great calls. calls. Men used to make these bad oh, phone calls, yes. And okay. that was one of the things that I told my husband one day, I said, I want you to answer the phone this time because I recognize that number. And it was so funny, my husband died laughing. And he said, you shouldn't have gotten that Atlanta number. I said, do you know how convenient that's been for us with Bell South giving me that number? Because that this was before yeah. cell phones. Yeah. This was before well, cell phones. We had an Atlanta line. That was a big to do. It was a big deal back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. It yeah. was cool. But but I would and this guy would call me usually on Fridays, and I'm like, I handed my husband the phone. He just cracked up. He said, "What?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but when I gave up that number, I've had this Atlanta line a long time. There were times when you came up here in the mountains. There was no cell service. Right. There were a few pay phones, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden. Boy, we burst open with cell service. With the pagers went away, the cell service became all that it is. There are still areas that still aren't served well with cell service. You but know most why? areas, you live there? No. No. Why the cell service was so good around uh, LG and Gilmer County? Because you were coming here? Not me. I wish that was it. Oh. But, there, but there were a number of Southern Bell executives that had oh, second okay. homes up in uh, Gilmer <coughs> and Fanning County. There you go. There you go. So, <laughs> so those cell towers became. Uh, uh, they had a certain priority to them. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So you're lucky. Now, <clears throat> as progress comes, um, we did see some progress stopped on Boardtown, and I'm so very, very thankful for that, that they did not destroy this beautiful road. Yeah. You were involved in that. David Ralston was involved in that. So many people, you listened to what the neighborhood said, and everybody said this is a bad choice. Have they decided to put it on 515? My understanding is that they have. <coughs> Good. And uh, even though I did get involved with it, uh, we can thank David Ralston for that because absolutely nobody cared. Nobody up there who was doing this cared what I thought, but they did care what David thought. Yes, yes, so. yes. And I'm so thankful for that because as I drive that, it has that arbor of trees across the, yeah. it's like this beautiful setting. And it's it's photography that you can't get anywhere else. It's beauty that you can't get anywhere else. And they would have destroyed that. Absolutely. Yeah. And and some of the plans that I saw <coughs> for the location of some of these poles 
were, they were a bit puzzling to me. Yes. I mean, you know, right in front of somebody's front door. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't but, that have uh, been a disaster? Oh, that would yeah, destroy yeah. your property. That well, completely. that goes to show that people got together, mm -hmm. and the the better choice was made, and hopefully that won't cause any tragedy and trauma on five fifteen. It's you know it's a big wide road. So yeah. what's it going to do to it? Nothing. Well, know? there's some folks that are unhappy about it. I've heard from them. Really? But wow. there's nowhere that they can put this that there's not going to be some folks that are yeah. unhappy about yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Um, but just uh, the other thing that it shows is if enough people are voicing what they think, mm -hmm. they'll listen. Right. Know. Well, we've run into that a little bit in ball ground, and <clears throat> a lot of people are voicing what they think, but they got the, to the party a little bit late. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you've been here 17 years. We have a lot of people who moved into ball ground and they're newbies. I call them, I guess, newbies because they're five years or less. And they all have their opinion about what we should do to grow. And everybody, nobody gets it that 372 does not belong to ball ground. It belongs to the state of Georgia. And this morning, I stood at the office and I was watching tags go through. And it was every county in the world but Cherokee County. We are the pass-through for everything. And everybody whines and belly aches and complains about the potholes on 372. The city would love to fix them, but the city doesn't own that road. Right. So here in Gilmer County, you work all over Gilmer County, but if it's in the city limits, you don't have anything to do with it, do you? If it's in the city limits, we can't touch it. Right. And we have the same situation as, as they have with 372 in it, with 52 and, right. and uh, you know any number of other state roads that are right. going through the it county. It is the state's property. Right. Yeah. yeah. And as much as you would love to go out there and even shovel gravel in a hole yourself, you can't do it. It's actually illegal. Yeah, people don't get it. And I just get so aggravated. The, the one thing I would love to see happen, and I think Ball Ground has the authority to do this, they could take their city police and patrol Main Street, and I think that we have to slow down traffic. We have to slow down, because I don't know what they do up here on your roundabout in town, <clears throat> but in Ball Ground, it's like demolition derby. They come down that hill, everybody's going too fast, and yeah. we've got two crosswalks for people to cross over. Somebody's going to get run over. You got to slow down the traffic, whether it be tourists or locals or people just traveling through using it as a bypass. You've got to slow down the traffic. And we have that problem all over the county. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the chief complaints I get is people are just flying down through here. Right. And I have to tell them, you know, I can put you up a speed limit sign, but I don't, I can't enforce it. Mm -hmm. you know? Wow. And uh, the uh, the sheriff can enforce it, but. We've got, I don't even know how many square miles of surface area here, and I know we've got 502 miles of roads. Wow. There's no way the sheriff can control adequately that. patrol yeah. 502 yeah. miles of roads yeah. Yeah. with the budget we give him. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. I, I think he may have a solution to that, but. Yeah, he uh, needs more money. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about so, budget because yeah. you're spending uh, about 40% more on fuel this year. Yeah, and it's killing us. It's killing you. And uh, as the school buses travel around picking up kids on school buses, and we look at our tax bill and we realize that lots of our tax bill comes from the cost of providing school and transportation and all that, it has to be done. It has yep. to be done. And so you have to adjust your budget. And where do you take from and what do you do? How do you do that? Well, that's the problem. Uh, and fortunately, uh, we we don't have to adjust it in terms of the schools because they have their own budget. Mm -hmm. Board of Education does. Of course, they got the same problem we got. Sure. But <clears throat> imagine are, 300 buses yeah. and them paying each bus 40 percent more in fuel. How well, do they do it? I, I can give you a pretty good idea because we don't have 300 buses, but but between all the gravel trucks, road equipment, and mm -hmm. dump trucks mm -hmm. and all that, you know, we we've got quite a few of them on the road. And those things are not 30 miles per gallon vehicles. No. In um, 30 days, what do you yeah. think it cost you for the disaster we have with fuel prices? In 30 days, I'd say probably $4,000. 4000 yeah. hmm. Now, that's just off the top of my head. Yeah. I haven't yeah. actually gone yeah. in and looked. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I see the... It's coming from somewhere. Uh, yeah, I see yeah. the receipts coming through where, where we filled up, mm -hmm. you know. And I filled up my own 
vehicle, which only holds, I think, 16 gallons. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm spending $60. Mm -hmm. $65 for a fill. $97 day before yesterday to fill mine up. $97. Yeah. And everybody says, then why don't you drive something smaller? Because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. I want to be safe and I like big vehicles. I don't want to. I'm about to be hit with that. My, my boat's on empty. Oh, no. And it and holds 38 gallons. Oh, yes. And, and it, it takes, takes a, a good grade. fuel, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> I'm going to have to fill it up probably this weekend. And oh, it'll, my. It'll be over $100 oh, to yeah. do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow. that's going to wow. hurt a bit. Now, you're a fisherman. Yeah. You love to fish, yeah. and you love the lakes around here. Is there is that maybe what brought you to this area? Did you love the outdoors life, or what was it? Uh, what brought me to this area was... <clears throat> initially was trout fishing mm -hmm. uh, and it's ironic because I haven't been trout fishing since I got here 17 oh, wow. years ago <laughs> oh, that's funny. but uh, I used to would drive uh, you know two two and a half hours to get to where I could do some trout fishing and camp out mm -hmm. for a few days right um, and uh, my wife would do that with me we'd we'd come up we had several really favorite places we had a little old 15 foot Scotty camper wow and, uh, 15 kinda, feet, 15 yeah, it's, feet, it's, that's it was like, small. yeah, little, yeah. Um, but that was, you know, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but we came up, we, we were initially going to um, where we could uh, camp for a few days and trout fish, mm -hmm. which wasn't actually Gilmer County, it was nearby. Mm -hmm. uh, we would come into Gilmer County for restaurants and so forth. But then uh, we, uh, we got to where we would rent a cabin to stay in and just never mind the trout fishing or anything mm -hmm. like just, just get enjoy. away from it yeah. all for a yeah. few days yeah and uh, that was in Gilmer County so when it got time for us to start thinking about where are we going to retire to um, Gilmer County was very high on the list yeah yeah so. yeah yeah now have you been to the top of Fort Mountain uh, I can't when it goes over to um, Chatsworth that way not unless going on that road counts as the top of the Yes. Mountain. Okay. Well, at, on Highway 52, is it west? 52 west. Yeah. That's the way it would be going. West, yeah. yeah. That, to me, um, I started in Chatsworth one fall day, and I came across, and I videoed, and I thought it was just the most gorgeous thing I'd ever seen. And I got to the top, and we were leaving Murray County. Mm -hmm. And as we approached Gilmer County, I can tell people, if your tourism committee ever does a video in the fall, they should go to the top of Fort Mountain and just come down 52. Some of the most beautiful scenery, the most beautiful leaves and trees. It's like God went in there with a paintbrush. And in the fall, some of the prettiest foliage I've ever seen. Absolutely gorgeous. So that mountain alone could attract people here. It's just, oh, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. There's, this is probably too broad of a statement, but I don't think there's a, primary road in Gilmer County that doesn't have some section on it that just take your breath away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 52 East is one of those I love because I love seeing the apple orchards in bloom yeah. and I love seeing the peach trees blooming. I just, I love that. Yeah. And I love the fields and the cattle. You know, it's just, it is unbelievable. And for people who haven't been to Gilmer County, they need to just plan a daycation or a staycation yeah. and come and spend a couple of days and get out and truly ride, ride the back roads. Right. And, yeah, and even if you go a dirt road and your GPS says, hey, stupid, turn around, there's a dead end. <laughs> and you turn around, there's a dead end. But yeah. everybody should get to know these mountains yeah. and then make a decision when it is time to retire. Well, of course you'd want to retire. You know, between Ball Ground and Turtle Town, there's got to be somewhere yeah. you can settle in. Yeah. Did you retire young? It all depends on which time I retired. OK, OK. Uh, Initially, I was 50, 51 years old. Young, young but, man, uh, young that man. Was, uh, that was with AT&T, uh -huh. and I wasn't ready to retire. I still had kids in college, but uh, they made an early retirement offer that was not to be refused. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And uh, initially, I didn't think I was going to get it because they said uh, IT doesn't get it, the IT department. Uh -huh. And uh, fortunately, the IRS came back and said, no, you can't exclude them. Oh, wow. You can, you can put a limit on it, but you can't exclude them. Oh, So they said, awesome. okay, well, IT can have it uh, only up to this many people. Mm -hmm. And the only criteria is seniority. Wow. So I put you in for it. it. 
Well, I had it. I had 31 years. Wow. And I think I was like sixth person from the bottom of getting, not getting it. Oh, goodness. I That's mean, scary. I, there, yeah. I just got in. But, wow. But I got it and retired. Uh, my last day with AT&T was on Wednesday. And I reported out to Hewlett Packard the following Monday. Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> I worked, retirement uh, was five days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I worked uh, 13 <clears throat> years of contracts with Hewlett Packard and then retired again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I stayed retired for a couple of years or so that time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I always believed that you could never do too much fishing. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I could fish every day for the rest of my life. Wow. Except Saturday and Sunday. My, the whole thing about retirement is you don't go fishing on Saturday and Sunday with everybody else. Because everybody else is there. Yeah, yeah. you go in yeah. the middle of the week when you yeah. get the place to yourself. <clears throat> sure. But I finally did get a little tired of it, and I said, I need something else. And where I really messed up is I said, I'm going to start going to all the commission meetings. And so you did. And, did. <laughs> and the truth be told. <laughs> and I went for a long time to all the commission meetings, and I went home one day and I told Barbara, I either got to stop going or I got to run for it. <laughs> so, uh oh, <laughs> getting too frustrated. Now, when you when you got involved in Gilmer County politics, did you learn quickly that um, you got to know who you got to know? You got to know who the farmer is at the end of the road yeah. that you think doesn't have a dime or a pot, and he owns it all. Well, I, he, I already he probably had owns five thousand acres. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I already had learned that lesson. Yes, yes, so, yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's always a shock, I think, for somebody when you first get into politics. Um, I had met a lot of good people, and they helped me in the campaign, and that was mm -hmm. actually the only reason I, I Were won, you I received well? Because you were, after all, an outsider. I was, and but I was received very graciously. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell you how many people told me now, I like you, and I'm going to vote for you, but you do know you don't have a chance, right? Yeah, and now so, look, <laughs> yeah. But fortunately, I, I was able to, to get yeah. the win. So. Yeah, yeah. And what I found out, now, I thought I'd be going to all these, every meeting they've had. I, didn't even, I haven't missed one for two years, you yeah. know. And uh, so I know everything that's going on in the county. I'm going to be able to hit the <clears throat> ground running. No. No. <laughs> no, no. You're kidding yourself. I, uh, it never occurred to me that there's a lot going on in Gilmer County that does not come through those meetings. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, it was a shock. And, and you came in at a time we had ups and downs with budgets, we had ups yeah. and downs with the economy. We did see a lot of small businesses fail during a period of time. Yeah. And now we're seeing those buildings filled again, thank goodness. And um, a lot of people never recovered from the losses. And you kind of, do you feel like now we're at a point, fuel prices are high, house prices are too high. Are you a little bit nervous about what could come our way? Oh, I'm more than a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. We all are. Uh, but I'll say this, even if the prices had not gone up, if inflation wasn't an issue in fuel prices, uh, I think the bubble's going to burst. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people do. And I, I don't know when, it may be sooner with all this, mm -hmm. but I, I think it's inevitable that it was coming. I will say, though, that I don't think it's going to be as bad on us this time as it was last time. And there were no jobs, Charlie. There were no jobs. No. I had four part-time jobs, and, um, you know, used to you could walk in Walmart or Target or anywhere, and they were always hiring. They weren't hiring. Nobody was hiring. Captain D's wasn't hiring. Nobody was hiring. Now everybody's hiring. Right. So I think that's the difference in then and now, is that you can get a job almost anywhere. If you don't have yeah. a job, you don't want to work. And, and exactly, and the jobs now are paying a lot more too, because mm -hmm. along with the inflation and all the other things, salaries have risen quite a bit. Right. I know that's the case right. within the county. Is Gilmer County still hiring, or are they full? What's oh, no, going on? We're, we're hiring. Hiring. Yeah. Well, I say we're hiring. We're we're attempting to hire. Yes. You know. We're, Tell me what what departments need help. Uh, road department needs mm -hmm. help for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we just have reached what we need in planning and zoning, but it took us a long time to get there. Really? Did yeah. you need somebody with a degree? Was it a certain uh, job? Was it? No, we were willing to train them. Wow. And and wow. Uh, planning and zoning, particularly as uh, as an inspector, is one of the higher paying jobs in the county. Mm -hmm. And that uh, was hard to fill. 
well, not as hard to fill as some of the others because of the uh, uh, the level of pay that you have mm -hmm. and the fact that we were willing to train them if mm -hmm. we needed to do that mm -hmm. to get the certifications. Mm -hmm. The road department was the hardest one to fill. Wow. It's very difficult to get somebody to come out and work on a hot July day on a hot asphalt, asphalt road yes. for ten dollars an I hour. Can, yeah, yeah. When they can go to McDonald's for fourteen and get right. lunch, you know. Right, right. One of the things though that we've done Did you increase the pay? In this last budget we raised uh, in the road department we raised four dollars an hour across the board mm -hmm. Good. so we felt like that should make a difference and, I, and i'm going to make i'm going to make fun because we all do when we pull up to road construction we all hate road construction but we love it when it's finished right. we love it when it's finished but there's a sign holder <coughs> who's usually smoking a cigarette <laughs> sign holder and then there's three more people standing there talking to him and you're going it took four of y'all to do this. Well, they're off their equipment and they're waiting for something, you know, yeah. but we all laugh about that. I used to say, I want a job being a sign holder, but I don't smoke. But then I said, I went through one on one July day and I saw the sweat board on that dude. I never mind, yeah. I don't want to be a sign holder anymore. Right. It's tough and it's hot it and it's miserable and it's cold and it's miserable and yep. it is all the time. And when we get these humongous rains that oh uh, wash out the roads <coughs> and all this. Mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's tough being out in the usually cold and heavy yeah, rains. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it's the road department we call yeah. right when we have that yeah. sort of stuff. Remember on the east side of the county, we had a lot of flooding about seven or eight years ago, mm -hmm. really, really bad yeah. flooding. That took forever to resolve those problems. Are there still issues out there? Are the bridges all fixed now? Uh, everything is fixed now. Uh, the thing that took the longest was uh, um, the uh, old Bucktown Road slide. Oh, that was a uh, mess. That was that was a real mess that because was a mess. it slid off into just a straight down, you know. We had one of those on 136 in Pickens County at the Pickens Gilmer near the yeah. line, and it was bad for a long time. That yeah. road was closed. Yeah. We had a lot. Of when trouble. it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. And, <laughs> it's and, gone. And. and when you're trying to build it back out on the same side mm -hmm. and there's nothing there but air you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. it's tough uh we actually were getting help from fema and gma on that uh which wound up not really <coughs> costing us all that much money because we we had that funding coming but we had to do it how they said do it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what we did was initially we said let us just get over on the other side of the road and widen it and we'll make this the this lane and we won't build out this way we'll just go that way and, and do it they said no that would constitute an improvement and we're not going to pay that improve we'll pay to put it back the way it was wow and so in the end uh we had the geologists and all out there and they they certified to us that you are never going to be able to put another lane here wow and this is now your only option Mm -hmm. So we went back to them and they said, okay, fine, do it. Wow. So but you got your way. We, but it, well, you had to go through uh, an act of Congress to do it. Pretty yes. much. Yeah. 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 Wow. But, you know, they got their rules. <clears> and, <throat> yeah, uh, I understand that. But the situation changed enough that we were able to do it that way. So. You know, Pickens County got the new VA hospital. Were y'all ever in the works to have a location for the VA hospital? Did anybody ever talk to y'all? No. No. No, it was never. That was never an option for the folks who they were pushing the mm -hmm. VA hospital. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I go by there every few days, and there are a lot of cars there, a lot of employees there, a lot going on. Um, we know that these mountains are settled with people who may have been a Vietnam vet. We have to say thank you. Yesterday was the day to recognize all Vietnam vets. A lot of people retired of these mountains, and with that, they were having to travel back to Atlanta to the VA hospital. It's so wonderful to have. I think there's one in Blairsville now and the one in Jasper. Yeah. So they're serviced both ways, and that takes you to the north and to the south. Are you learning and, and listening to the veterans who come into this community, and they need services, and they need so many things? And I know you have the Veterans Memorial here that's just an amazing, yeah. amazing project. It is. and and. Sandy Lyons he was, is, is yes, to be thanked yes, for that. He absolutely. has absolutely been uh, amazing. He's like a go-getter and get her done. Yeah, he is, yeah, and, and he yeah. sunk a lot of his own money in that 
to. Really? Wow. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, we try to give preference to the veterans whenever mm -hmm. we can. Mm -hmm. um, we don't hear a lot from them. You know, I found that generally the they just come in. The proud and the few, yes. They just kind of come in and live their lives. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they're proud <coughs> to be a veteran, but they won't come up and say, I need so-and-so, and oh, by the way, I'm a veteran. Right. Which is impressive, and I, and, and, yeah. and I applaud them for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we do try, well, when we have a situation with a veteran, to uh, handle it just as mm -hmm. quickly and as well as we can. Yep, yep. Well, we're going to take a break. We're going to do a commercial, and we want to share a little something. And this is this pays tribute to a lot of artists who are in our community. It pays tribute to some stores that are in our community. It's just a bunch of pictures that I had put together a while back that um, shows Larry Dodson's art. And Larry Dodson is an artist that I met because of Lynn Lee up in the Copper Basin. She said, hey, I have this guy I want you to go talk to, and the rest is history. We've been friends since that very day. And um, he loves coming to these mountains. Number one, he loves to trout fish. And number two, he loves to take photographs and then go back to his studio and paint these beautiful mountains. One of his first selling paintings that sold out in five days was, it's called um, Springtime in LJ. And I happen to own a copy of that. It is an absolutely beautiful old tree that was here in Gilmer County. And sadly, that tree is gone now. Something happened to the tree. I don't know if a storm, I don't know what happened to it, but it, it was a beautiful, beautiful painting. So if you're out with your camera, if you are an artist, Gilmer County is one of the most beautiful places in the world to capture the moment. So let's show you a little bit of that and a little music and a commercial, and then we'll be back in just a minute. you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi, not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more.
we're back. Okay, Charlie. You know, I asked you before we went on the air about the roundabout that y'all have nothing to do with, but right. explain to me why now we have access from 515 to the roundabout in LJ that takes you, where does it take you? So you're talking about from the 515? 515, and you cut over to the left and you go and you end up on old five. Tell me the, what that, what's the purpose for that? It was originally intended to be a bypass <coughs> that would, uh, take all the traffic, there was so much traffic going to Kusawati in particular oh, yeah. and up that way, that the idea was to take and pull that traffic off early and lessen the load coming up uh, into uh, the city there. And, and mm -hmm. Did that work? That, uh, I think it would have worked if it had been done 20 years ago when it was first approved. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh, and I guess it did work, but because I thought it was truck traffic. I just didn't get the concept, so I, yeah. that's why I'm asking. Um, I, I don't think for truck traffic it's doing much different. Okay, so we thought but, uh, it would be an advantage to yeah. Kusawati getting off sooner, going to their gate, and entering right. their facility. Right. Okay. And, how many and homes are in Kusawati? I don't know how many homes. I understand there's five, over 5,000 lots. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I don't know what percentage they are built out. I know they're not completely. I know there used to be a saying in real estate, don't list it in Kusawati because you can't sell it in Kusawati. This was during the downturn last time when it was yeah. so desperately bad. But now they're selling the blazes out of houses. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it must be a great well, place to live. Uh, I, from what I can tell, it, it seems to be a very nice place. When we were renting the cabins, it was in Kusawati. Mm -hmm. Uh, we found one we liked. We just rented the same one over and over. <clears throat> and we we liked Kusawati, yeah. Kusawati a lot. I sold a house up there, and um, it was close to the back gate, which I loved because I love that back entry yeah. over on Legion Road. Mm -hmm. I love that. And a beautiful little cabin. And the people were from New York who bought it. Yeah. Retired police officer from New York. So. Well, Kusawati was the first place we looked when we decided to buy something up here. Mm -hmm. And we found several uh, lots that nice lots and beautiful views and, and reasonable prices, we would have we bought them, but the roads weren't paved yeah. for that particular yeah. lot. Yeah. And uh, that was one of, that was a requirement yeah. we had. Well, so. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you. I, I don't have this car anymore. I had a Lincoln Town car, and I went to look at a campsite lot that somebody mm -hmm. had where people put their campers. Oh, my goodness. You should have seen my Lincoln trying to crawl up that hill, and it was going, ooh, <laughs> ooh, and I said, oh, no, I need something that sits up a little bit a little bit higher off the ground. But a lot of activity in there, a lot of homes, a lot of houses, a lot of people coming yep. and going. Yep. So is that a big tax base for Gilmer County? Um, I think it might be more of a tax base for the city of LJ. Okay. But uh, but now, even <coughs> though you're in the city limits, you, there's still a county component to your taxes. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, anytime you have that many homes together like that, it's certainly and their values are increasing. Yeah, the values all over the county are unbelievable. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about that. Does your county tax assessor answer to you to anybody to keep up with the market? Because I just did a comp, and I'm not going to tell you what I did. I, I was so embarrassed. I wrote this offer four times what the county had it at. Four times. Yeah. Asked me, did we get it? You did? No. No? No. We no. were low bid on it. Oh, my goodness. Four times what the county had it assessed at. I'm so hearing a lot of stories. Can like the that. assessor keep up today with the market values going so crazy? I, my, that, the call I just missed was my buyer yeah. wanting to know did I go up on it enough to get it? Uh, no, we haven't yet, but we're trying. Yeah. But I already went four times what the county had assessed at. Yeah. How does the county keep up with things going so crazy? How do you do that? Well, we have to make sure that they're adequately staffed. And one of the things we found out a few years ago is we also have to make sure that they have enough cars, that all these assessors, nobody's sitting in the office because they don't have a car they can take out. Get out there and do it, yeah. So, uh, of course, that was before all this. <coughs> Broke. I think the craziness. We the call craziness. it the craziness. Yeah. yeah, we call it the craziness. That was before the craziness. Yeah. Uh, I think we're well positioned to to do that. Uh, How often do you go out and reassess value? Is there like uh, two you, years, five you years? You have to reassess 
every two years. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there are some situations where they do it more often, but that's, as if I you see improvement, If you see improvement or you see right. change or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they've got the, the flyover images, you know, where we've actually got software now, I say we, their, their software exists, that can take these flyover images <clears throat> and, and flag it and, and send you an email that says there's a house over here that has a garage that wasn't on the last picture. Mm -hmm. And the software will do that for you. Wow. So you don't even have to send somebody out looking anymore. Wow, that is cool. But uh, <coughs> they, and the, one thing I do want to be sure to get in is they do not answer to us. Mm -hmm. And I understand that because And the tax assessor is appointed, influence. not elected. Yes, the, yeah. the tax appointed assessor by board is appointed by the board of commissioners. Mm -hmm. So we do appoint the board, and once we appoint them, we're out of it. Uh, they don't they, answer to you, even though you chose them that, as that's your correct. employees. Interesting. And then the board gets together and elects among themselves a chief appraiser, mm -hmm. uh, which would not be a board member. They just hire a chief appraiser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I just yesterday, I, I mean, I literally, I told my broker, I said, "Do not judge me on this thing I just did." <laughs> Do not judge me because I've attached the county, yeah. what the county had it valued at. I said, don't think I've lost my mind. This is what my seller or what my buyer wanted yeah. to offer. Well, that's one of the reasons why <clears> I <throat> said a while ago, I don't think when, when the bubble bursts, I don't think it'll be as bad on us this time as last time because of the amount of cash purchases, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. either cash this or is almost cash. cash. This is cash closing 10 days. Yeah. This is well, cash closing 10 days. Anytime, they want it. They want to buy it. They're yeah. going to buy it if we can get it in there. But anytime gosh. you're paying two or three or four times what the appraisal is, you're not going to get uh, an independent appraisal that's no, going to No, there's no appraisal that. involved in this. No. So you can't get a mortgage for that. No. So the people no. who are doing this have to have <laughs> no. money to pay, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And we're seeing a lot of that. So <clears throat> a lot of uh, the purchases that are being made now have a large cash component. Mm -hmm. And I think that will help defray all of the uh, foreclosures mm -hmm. and so forth mm -hmm. when it does finally come crashing right. down because these folks are not in danger of losing this property. Yep. Now they may. Yep. They may cry a little in the pillow about. Yep. It. Well, <laughs> we had to have one appraised, and it was a double wide mobile home that's been completely remodeled. And I was giving him a comp, mm -hmm. and we sold the comp, <clears throat> and he said, "It's sold for how much?" And I told him, he said, "A double wide." I said, "On yeah. two acres." He said, how much? And I told him again, and he said, well, that's a great comp to use. Thank you very much. And he was like floored, you know. Yeah. And, and honestly, when I pulled up the one, this was a Gordon County property. I'll just go ahead and tell you. Mm -hmm. But it was hysterical because I printed it, and I looked down. I said, oh, oh, because I had already submitted my offer. And I said, oh, God, I can't believe we offered that much, you know. And that's why I wondered how often do you... And, and Gordon County, I'll just tell anybody, if you have a budget, I can sell you something in Gordon County a lot cheaper than I can anywhere else, but there's a reason. There's a reason. It's not Atlanta close. It's not Buckhead close. It's not Alpharetta close. It's not convenient to the Blue Ridge Mountains. Yeah. It's not <clears throat> location, location, location. Right. End of story. Exactly. You know, you can jump on 75 and go to Dalton. You can jump on 75 and go to Cartersville. But you can't jump on 75 and go to Blue Ridge. Right. And, and that, you know, we all know we're paying the price for Blue Ridge being so beautiful. Yeah. Because yeah. Blue Ridge is amazing. And, you know, that lake is one of the best in the state. It's absolutely fantastic. So you pay the price to be where yeah. you want to be, location, location, location. Absolutely. So, yep. Would you downsize from what you and Barbara chose now? Would you buy less or would you? are you happy with what you have? Well, I'm happy with what I have, but I will say that if we were to sell and buy something else, I would downsize. Mm -hmm. um, now People tell me they don't want generous. yards and they don't want maintenance. We hear that a lot. I, well, <laughs> I, I, I want a yard, but I don't want maintenance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that seldom works. Yeah. I would be happy if I just had a yard that was level enough I could get a lawnmower on it. Mm -hmm. uh, our, we've got three acres and it's so steep that it has to be cut with the weed whacker. Oh yeah, that's fun, isn't and it? And so yeah. we have to, I'm not getting out there with a yeah. weed whacker on yeah. three acres. Yeah. So we have to hire it done every yeah. time. It's quite expensive. Yeah. yeah. But 
I do. Think of the jobs you're providing. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. I, I would get uh, a smaller place because it's just me and Barbara. Mm -hmm. But I would get something with a lot more storage than what I've got now. Mm -hmm. um, and more level. Yeah. And, yeah. and single level ranch. Yep, yep. You know. yep. Ranch I, I is where it's at. Anything over 65 years old, you want a Absolutely. ranch. Absolutely. There would be no more. <laughs> Everybody walks in my office wants a ranch. There would be no more stairs if we ever yeah, sell yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've, uh, uh, we've gotten some indications, you know, of what we could get for it, and it's, mm -hmm. it's mind-boggling. It blows your mind. And I, I told Barbara, I said, great, sell it, you know. Yeah, said, today, today. Today, <laughs> today I'll, we'll move in the Motel and, 6. Uh, and, and I will tell you, we're living there still because she said no. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about focus because yeah. the, the money is to be spent and you have designs and plans and people coming in. Have you found an architect? Do you have engineering mm -hmm. going on? We, we have an architect uh, and have had for quite a while. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> He's got the plans and so forth. and. We're moving along steadily with that. Um, when do you think they'll break ground? Uh, I'm going to kind of go out on a limb and say probably August or so. Good. Uh, I think we, we are in line that we could do that. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> Building material is going to be a factor because oh, it's I'm so sure expensive. It is. Yeah. 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 Yeah, when we first uh, started this and uh, then with the budget we had, which was not insignificant, mm -hmm. uh, I'd say prices are up a good 15 percent yeah. since then, yeah. just on materials. So not quite sure how we're going to handle that yet. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It will be because I've made a pledge to the other commissioners that we won't put any more county money into it than we already have. Mm -hmm. So we, we put $100,000 <coughs> in with the, the, the donations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I made a pledge we've, we we would finish this without putting more county money into mm -hmm. it. Well, Which is a good thing. Yeah. 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 But it's going to be a Now, this is challenge. a year, there's an election this year, and yeah. I'm, I'm going to shoot something at you that I shot at my mayor. Okay. I love my mayor. I'll just say I love my mayor. Rick Roberts is a hoot. He he is he is a ball ground boy and he loves ball ground. Yeah. And he always says, I'm not gonna run again. And I said, Oh, but we want you to because you love this town and you love what we're you know, you love it. I said, You need to run again. I said, I'm gonna get you to use your, your female hormones and tell him that you've just changed your mind and he just cracked <laughs> up. But Charlie, did you do you plan on your running again? And no. this, no, you're not going to run well, again. No. You're going to run I'm running now. This time. This time. But this is it. And you're done. Yes. Yeah. Is it two year, four year term? Four year. Four year. Okay. So you're willing to give four more years, and do you see things um, happening faster? Things moving smoother? Are you transitioning to a period that everybody works together? How's that going? I, th I think things are going to be happening faster and smoother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I hope that we are transitioning to where everybody works together, and I think that will be the case. But at the same time, uh, I'm talking about county workforce working together. Mm -hmm. We've got a real divide in this county now that we didn't have a few years ago. What is it? Growth or no growth. Oh, yes. We have that mall ground. Um, yeah. There's, uh, and, and <coughs> what seems to be pretty well equally divided, mm -hmm. and each side is really passionate. Um, we've got uh, a group that wants to leave everything just the way it is, mm -hmm. keep Gilmer Royal, and then a group that says, well, we need prosperity requires that we just exactly. grow however much we can. Right. And they're a both well right. planned, A well-planned controlled exactly. growth is necessary. Right. Yeah. Because your tax structure, salaries are going to go up, yep. the cost of insurance is going to go up, the cost of your fuel for your vehicles is going to go up, yep. and somebody has to bring in that money to replace that. It's yep. going to happen. What I don't see happening, though, is <clears throat> if, if we go have a good controlled growth, I worry that neither one of the sides are going to be happy. Wow. Well. Because they're not flexible. Mm -hmm. That's sad. And... If you're not flexible, you're probably going to end up unhappy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that goes. I was going over some plans last night with, with a couple of young ladies, and we were talking about controlled growth in ball ground. And one of them's in there all of her life, and one of them has only been around seven years. 
and and we were talking about the controlled growth and she said it's so exciting to see the new growth in ball ground she said I've been here since I, I was born here this is so exciting to see the new growth and I thought Lord I love you because everybody else is like newcomers who came in and thinks we should shut the door behind them and I'm like, no, we can't shut the door behind you because somebody else has to yeah. has to pick up the slack and pay the taxes and do the improvements. And and I'm just like, wow, but this young woman was just so, she was so excited. She said, yeah. it's so exciting to see the growth in ball ground now. And I thought, I need you to be the poster child for what <laughs> we're doing, you know, because she, she was excited and, and so happy with it. And she said, it's just amazing to see all that's happening in, in our businesses. And, you know, you want people to be excited and be happy, yeah. and you want it to happen without destroying anything. Exactly. So, but she grew up there, right? She did. You know, one of the interesting things that I'm finding goes right along with that. For the most part, the people who are okay with growth are the people who grew up here, mm -hmm. and the people who want it absolutely stopped. Are came the here. Who yes. Yes. Came here. Yes. That's exactly so. what we're facing in Ball Ground. That's exactly yeah. the same thing. There's a group of about 150 people that are, and I'm not going to tell you what I named them because I can't say it on the air, but anyway, um, when you complain and complain and complain and you don't look at, you know, we have an opportunity for something to come to ball ground that a lot of people are against. It's going to happen in Cherokee County and we're watching everything about it. It's going to bring in a lot of jobs, a lot of revenue, a lot of everything. And they keep saying it's going to bring in a lot of traffic. It's controlled. It will not bring in the traffic that they're worrying about. It will because it's real near 515 yeah. or 575. But but with all the things that we want to happen, we have to bring in more money. We have to bring in more money. So um, it's it's a it's a win-win situation if people yeah. work together. Yeah. It's a win-win if everybody gets to together. together. Yeah. And a little yeah. flexibility. Yeah. And I understand the, the folks who came here. I understand what they say. I, you know, they I came, came here, here because they liked it the way this, it was. Yes. So I don't want it to change. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. But yep. Everywhere changes. So. Right. Right. It does. So. It does. Like my hair, it changes every day. <laughs> okay, guys. We're At gonna... least you got hair. <laughs> I do have hair, Charlie. I love you. Thank you for being here today. I enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you for you. being here today. And I have one thing I want to read, and then we're going to go to a little bit of music during the show. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, I can successfully resist the devil and he must flee from me. Show me when I am not recognizing the encroachment of the enemy in my life. Teach me to use that authority you have given me to see him defeated in every, hour, in every area. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That is today's message and this is what Don gave me. It's James 4, 7 and that is a really cool, cool message. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, I can successfully resist the devil and he must flee from me. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Thank you for being here. Okay, guys, we're going to leave you with a little bit of music. Sit back and enjoy. I will see you again soon only on ETC. We're inside High Shoals Baptist Church now. I'm on top of Amicalola Falls. This is in memory of Clarence Stanley who made the church, who made this church because of his love for his church family and his savior. How cool is this? <clears throat> and again, here's a view out the window. And I don't know where the lights are. Is it? I don't know if it has lights. It's kind of dark in here today because it's a gloomy day. But it's a beautiful day to visit. Look at these handmade pews. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. How awesome is this? And everybody has their little cushions. That is so sweet. That is so sweet. You can tell that these are handmade cushions by church members who know that these pews are hard to sit on, but their hearts in this church, and after many, many years, you know, these are pews up and down. They, they got a lot of seats in here for a small church. It is really, really cool. And again, this is what you see when you look outside. You're absolutely on top of the mountain where Amicalola Falls is. And it's just really, really cool. This is awesome. 
has a little bit of heat on, so I'm approved I like today. And again, here's a little bit about the church when they have meetings. And I don't know how often they have services. And honestly, I don't see a light switch, so I don't know if they have electricity or not. They do have gas, they have propane gas because they have heat in here. So, and they do have a cemetery that has a lot of folks in the cemetery. You can see out here from the cemetery. And again, this is High Shoals Baptist Church. Look at that water fountain out there. How cool is this? This church is a labor of love. A lot of people came together to build this church and to maintain it and still have church services here. It's really, really cool. This is what, I guess, Primitive Baptist, and just really, really neat. I don't know what year it was founded, but would that be called the Mourner's Bench right there in front of the pulpit? And here you go. This is what the pastor would see when he stood here to preach. And again, they're ready for the Christmas holidays. So if you're in the area, you might check out their schedule because it looks like they're getting ready for a Christmas service. So you might come up tomorrow. Tomorrow is not supposed to rain. It's supposed to be a beautiful day in Georgia. So why not come up to Amicalola Falls and visit this really cool Primitive Baptist Church at the top of Amicalola Falls. Amazing grace. How sweet a sound that saved a wretch like me.